That's what I like to see when I invite people over for dinner. Someone not afraid to put away a mountain of food. <laughs> that sure was good fish. I'm glad you liked it. Pulled it straight from the Gulf of California. It's moist. You want another fish taco? Oh, no, I'm stuffed. Oh, come on, pussy. Pussy? Oh, don't get your panties all in a wad. I'm joking, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have another small piece. Get it, get it, get it. No tortilla. Just... All right, here's a hot piece. Uh, maybe you could half it. All righty. You're a doctoral student, right, Mark? Oh, well, no, I finished. I have a doctorate in history. Oh, like my girlfriend. <laughs> well, she's a full professor of biochemistry. <laughs> well, you're smart people. I guess so. I... I'm a historian. I study the, the Paleo-Indian people, the Mississippi Delta. The Indians? And before that. Huh. Yeah, I'm just really interested in their culture, religion, weaving, pottery. It's just that it lacks anything new scientifically. You, know, you do some things differently statistically, you isolate certain proteins in sets, but I'm not sure it's enough for the faculty to believe that you're ready to defend your thesis. You need to look at your yeast experiment again and get that resolved. But I stopped that to concentrate on the protease inhibitor experiment because you said the yeast was less promising. You should take a long, hard look at what Wu Peng Wu did. I know what Wu Peng Wu did, but I'm not exactly Wu. No, oh, you're not. I ran 16 sequences last week to try to isolate more protein, and they all died. I was in the lab until 3 a.m. every night just trying to keep them alive, and then I open the freezer, and they're dead. That's part of science. All of them, dead. Thomas Edison found 1,000 different ways the incandescent wire of a light bulb would not work. I must have killed my protein like 2,000 times. I can't seem to get back to the original protein even though I'm following the same sequence. It just feels like everything I touch lately gets messed up. It's a marathon. A grueling marathon. Charles Chen defended, now Wu Peng Wu. Amy Tong, Li Feng, they're all gonna graduate before me. The Chinese work very hard. Listen, Mark, I've got me a little problem. Oh? Yeah, I got me what they call lazy sperm. Lazy sperm? I work very hard. I'm working hard and Mark is done just waiting for me. I'm sure Mark will be fine. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like he's just gonna give up on me. Just give up on waiting and find somebody else in Iowa. Makes it sound like they're sitting on the sofa all day doing bong hits and selling weed on the side to get by, don't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it does. Actually, they're not lazy, they're tired. Tired? It's okay. It'll be okay. Listen, I can help. I'll name you second author on my T-cell messaging experiment. You work so hard on that. Friends help friends. If you have the second authorship along with your other papers, it might be enough for you to sit for your defense. Really? I... Thanks. Yeah, you know that your sperms, they go from your balls out your dick, right? Oh yeah, I, I saw <laughs> films in junior high. Yeah, me too. But you know, the thing I didn't know until the other day was they, they kind of come up here near your stomach and around and around and around and then out your tallywhacker. And see, I got me a bunch of extra tubage up in there, so they got to swim more farther and then they, I guess they tuck her out. Well, yeah, I've never heard of anything quite like that before. Listen, I have never had a doctoral student not get his or her degree, and I do not intend to start with you, dearie. Have you talked to any other professors about sitting on your committee? No. I didn't know I was supposed to. Well, let me talk to Harold Dickens. He owes me a favor. Professor Lettings likes me. Then you should talk to him this coming week. Thanks. 
Thanks, yeah, I'll talk to him this week. Okay. We'll figure out a third later. And, Ren, I think it's best if we don't mention the T-cell experiment to the other graduate students. Oh, of course. Feel better? Yeah. Yeah, and I got low sperm count to boot, but we all got low sperm count these days. We do? Yeah, it's all those chemicals, shit they put in the water and food and shit. Everybody's sperm count is like not what it used to be. Yeah, I've never heard that. It seems like they wouldn't let that happen. Who's they? Corporations? The government? Those people will screw you for money. Agent Orange? Do you see Silkwood, that dioxin shit? Uh, yeah, well, I suppose you're right, yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose. It seems like you and Billy had a good time in Mexico. Oh, fantastic. I really like him. He's quite the character. Yes, he is. Well, it's just good to have a man who's fun. I mean, after Carl left me for his fat little Polish graduate assistant. I'm sorry. I'm a little tipsy-wipsy. Anyway, Sarah's wanting me to fix the tube problem. Fix it? Yeah, I don't want no doctors touching my tubes. They're dumbasses. <laughs> no, doctors are dumbasses? Yep. Why is that? Well, I hate milk. When I was a kid, I had to drink like three glasses of that shit every day because the doctors told me it was good for me and my mama, she made me drink it then. And now, they say it's bad for me. Same thing with milk, red meat. But I like them, but the point is, it's good for me now, it's bad for me. Well, I guess the science has evolved. They're not touching my dick. We need to get away because we're going through a little rough patch. Really? I'm sorry. Billy's impotent. One in 400,000 operations results in some loss of function. Well, not impotent, but it's, difficult for him to have kids and and then I'm 43 which doesn't help because I'm toward the end of my exponential curve that's difficult it's just ironic that Carl wanted to wait to have children until he was fully established as a professor and then finally we were really really trying and bang Carl fucks the fat Polak and she gets pregnant with my baby what does that mean? Exactly. What does that mean? Loss of function. Well, that is, that is vague. Yeah, vague. I'm so sorry, Professor. Yeah, me too. Call me Sarah, okay? Sure. Sarah. That's what it feels like. Like she has my baby. I put up with some real crap from that man for 17 years. And then to get treated this way, it's humiliating. It must be hard. It is. Ren, I want to ask you something. And I don't want you to take it the wrong way or to hate me. I wouldn't hate you, Sarah. Well, I was wondering if you would consider Letting Mark father a child with me. What? Anyway, I was wondering if you could father a child with Sarah. M me? Yeah, I sure would appreciate it. Oh, I don't know. That's uh, kind of strange. Yeah. Well, I'd have to ask Ren. Of course. But, I mean, if she was okay with it, would you do it? I mean, we don't have to sleep together. I, I just want his sperm. His sperm? He's a marvelous specimen. And it would mean the world to us. I don't know. It would really help us out. I don't want to lose Billy right now. I, I don't know if I could handle that. And we think the world of Mark. Apparently. He's such a good person. He's, he's educated and, and a good person, and you're a good person. And don't say anything to Billy, but we both know Mark has superior intelligence. <sighs> you know, Sarah really wants to have the baby, carry the baby, cut the bloody cord. You know that female shit. 
You don't smoke crack, do you? No. I'm joshing. <laughs> Philly's not perfect, but it works. And he has his good points. Yes. Everyone has their good points. Yes. If you were okay with the whole thing, I think it would really help. Many direction, you know. Who needs a shot? I know Mark does. I'll have one. Me too. Woo, now you're talking. Tequila. Hey, the apple pie looks great. It's a new recipe. Looks perfect. It does, it looks good there. I just hope everything turns out okay. <laughs> it looks marvelous. All right, here you go. Here you are, help yourself to a lime, some salt. Come here, baby. That is gonna give you a body shot. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> ah, salut. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> 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 Did you fish from the shore? What? Did you fish from the shore? Oh no, we we rented a boat and a guide. It was super. <laughs> hey, where's another gold? How do you go about renting a boat? Oh, the moment you get in San Felipe, there's Mexicans attacking you. Telling you I know where Mas Grande fish. <laughs> no, you can't. Take the first pescador that comes along. You gotta, you know, figure out a price range with the first couple, and then on the third or fourth one, you're ready to make a deal. Then it's like picking a dog. Just feel good about one of them, and away you go. Billy's really good at negotiating with them. I'm not very good at that. Well, you're not a bad negotiator when you really want something. So what it cost you? Seventy-five bucks for the boat, the guide, the gear, and he cleaned the fish to boot. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, he delivered too. They were hitting right away. There really is a science to it. First, you hold onto the line with your thumb. Rear back the pole and cast, letting go of the line at just the right time. Lure. That's what you've gotta do. That's what you put out there, and that's what you've gotta do. Lure. You start reeling in all the time, thinking about making your bait irresistible. Reeling in. He nibbles, nibbles, bites hard, and bang, you yank that rod. <laughs> now you got one pissed off puppy on your hand, he's gonna run faster than a purse snatcher. You gotta let him run and tie her up. That's the hard part, patience. I lost the first few fish because I pounded on them too fast, fought too hard, and they snapped my line. We had 40 pound tests, but they'll break it clean. You gotta wear them down. After he's tired, you start reeling him in slowly. But out of nowhere, he starts to fight again. Or. The line goes limp. He's making a run right for the boat. Then you gotta let the line out, let him run off to the other side. You keep wearing him down, you keep reeling him in, you outsmart him. Finally, there he is. Your heart starts to pound as you pull him in close. You gotta get him in the boat. Once he's flopping around, writhing on the deck, he's your prize. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing is, the hook doesn't really hurt the fish. They just feel a strong tugging. How do you know it doesn't hurt them? They got no nerve endings in their mouth. They don't feel a thing until you stab them with a gather and pull them up in the air. <laughs> Sounds exciting. I have no idea. <laughs> and you're drinking cold cerveza the whole time and bacon in the hot Mexican sun. We must have caught 50 fish. Well, it sure is good eating. Yeah, but one thing they don't have in Mexico is apple pie rent. Things smoking. Say so we carve it up. Here's a knife. Looks beautiful. It's Mark's mother's recipe. And crust is so easy. Easy as pie. <laughs> How do you make it? 
Uh, you sift two cups of flour and then you mix together half a cup of vegetable oil and a quarter cup of milk. Mix that together and it kind of forms like a dough. And uh, you just roll it out. Wow, look at that pie. Yeah, and oh, uh, best to use uh, wax paper when you roll the dough up. Looks divine. Thank you. Do you want a big piece? I want a big one. Mark? Uh, yeah, I'll just take a smidge. Thank you. Okay. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Oh no, the crust is wrong. Yeah, what happened? I don't know. It's hard. Outside is tough, but it's still juicy. Inside, inside it. It's not that bad. No, it's crisp with flaky. Uh, I can get some uh, ice cream bars out of the truck. Good God, Billy, no one wants a blow pop or a fudge sickle right now. I can't even follow a recipe for pie. I can't either. My mom's crust is like that, uh, flaky. My mom's crust is flaky? Wasn't being judgmental. Listen, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Ren, Ren, wait. Did that seem judgmental to you? No, not really. I, was, I wasn't trying to be judgmental. Women are sensitive. Um, I better go talk to her. Jesus, this is awkward. Yeah. Hmm. She melted down over that apple pie. Just too much for her, poor thing. Sort of symbolic, ain't it? What? The pie crust all hollowed out like that. What are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Did you talk to Mark? Yeah. What did he say? He's going to think about it. Well, did he seem receptive to the idea? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean, I um, no, no? I don't know. He said he would think about it. Did you talk about what I said? Yeah. What exactly did you say to him? Well, I told him about my condition with the lazy sperm and all, and that you wanted to have a baby. I asked him to do it. To do it, that's what you said? No, no, to donate sperm, to donate sperm. Did you tell him about my depression and crying? I think I forgot that part. And that you were worried about me? I forgot. We talked about this, Billy. I'm sorry. We went over and over it. I'm sorry, sweetie. And the money? Dang it. You forgot to mention the money. You know, it was like when you go to the grocery store to get three things and you get two of them and then you get some Twinkies. 
and then you're standing in line and that something just doesn't seem right and then in the end you just forgot to get the butter look my bad my bad my bad that's what you have to say i forgot sorry So, I was arrested for public intoxication, and Steve, he was driving, so they had him for DUI. And we were young, and Steve was just this big smartass. The officer processing us was named Riggs, and, and he had one of those buzz cuts, and Steve says the line from Deliverance, you have real pretty hair. <laughs> and I busted up. I was sitting on the bench just giggling like a big old girl. Later, they were rolling his fingerprints out, and Steve said, I like the way you touch my finger there, big boy. <laughs> I laughed so hard I blew snot out of my nose. And Steve said, Riggs, Billy just blew snot out of his nose because you're so cute. <laughs> and finally, I got it together. And I said, Steve, come on, man. Dude, you don't talk to a policeman that way. And Riggs said, you should listen to your pal over there, buddy. It was like a movie. He actually called him Buddy. <laughs> I was processed and taken to the drunk tank with about 30 other drunk dudes, and I waited in there for about an hour for Steve to arrive, and finally I just fell asleep. And in the morning, I was supposed to see the judge to get a bails bondsman so I can get the hell out of there. And they came in to get me alone, and I walked through some hallways and came to a sort of office. And they had all my stuff there in a plastic bag. And they told me that the charges against me were being dropped and that I was free to go. And I was happy because you got to pay 10% to the bails guy. And then there might be a fine. And I was walking out of there free as a bird. <laughs> and I asked about Steve. She said she didn't know anything about Steve, but, but that if I wanted to, I'd go around to the front to the desk and ask about him. So I went around there to the front and I stood in line with about, I don't know, 40 other people. And I was hungry because they hadn't served me breakfast, probably to save money, you know. I finally got up to the window and I asked about Steve, and the lady left and got a sheriff's deputy that, sergeant, and she had one of those lesbian haircuts they all have, and she said he was deceased. And I got that tug you get in the bottom of your stomach, and I couldn't breathe for a second, and I, Asked her what happened, and she said she wasn't allowed to tell me that it was policy. And I kind of whispered, you killed Steve. She said, I wasn't working last night, mister. And I remember screaming that they killed Steve because he made fun of the policeman last night. And some lady in the back of the line said, they killed my firstborn too, the motherfuckers. It's just one of those moments where time slows down. Later, Steve's mom called and said that he'd been placed in a cell with a gang member by mistake. And that gang member thought that he was in there for child molestation and he'd been beaten to death during the night. Jesus. 
He's my best friend since third grade. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, it's a good thing you didn't drop drunk. Yeah, I, I guess it's good we stayed. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. Keeps the party going, at least. I'm the kind of guy that hates to see the party in. I can imagine that. Yep, salute. Salute. <laughs> You know, I messed up earlier, Mark. You did? Yeah, I was supposed to offer you some money to have that baby, and I plumb forgot. Really? Yeah. We wouldn't want you masturbating to a jar for nothing. That wouldn't be right. <laughs> anyway, we're offering you $20,000. Sarah gets pregnant, and 3000 even if she don't. Wow, that's... Um pretty generous. Yeah, well, it's not like we're uh, going to a sperm bank here. We want your sperm. You want my sperm? Sarah does. You don't want my sperm? Well, I'd maybe pick someone a little more athletic. Oh, uh, I'm athletic. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Sorry that you're not athletic. I was on the cross country team in high school. Well, look, actually, I was kind of hoping that my son would play high school football. Well, I wanted to play high school football, but my, my mother wouldn't let me. I could have been a cornerback. Yeah, look, it, it's good. Um, I mean, it could be a girl. I don't want a big bone girl. Well, I'm not small boned. No, no. I'm medium boned. Yeah. S small, medium, you know, medium, small. Look, honestly, I'm just trying to keep my little woman happy here. I got a pretty good thing going. Just pretty good looking, younger, and let's face it, with a little dough and I like her, you know? Well, sure, yeah. I mean, actually, I, I love her. She's my soulmate. Yeah. You have any hobbies? Like body surf. Well, that's cool. And I smoke weed. You smoke weed? No. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. You got any hobbies? Yeah, I uh, I like to go to the track and bet on the horses. Oh, you go out to the uh, Indian casinos to do that? Well, it, if Rio Doso is open, I go there. But you know, I'll go out to the Native American casinos. It's just, it's, you know, it's like dangerous there because you can you can bet on races from all over the country, and it's really hard to keep up with horses from you know everywhere and their part time. What's and, a part time? Well, the time it takes a horse to run a certain distance at a given track. But I've got a system worked out for winning. How's that working out for you? Good, yeah. I, I hit a trifecta. It means I picked the winner and second and third place. $2 bet paid $1,374. Wow, salute. Salute. It's a good hobby to have. Make you rich. Yeah, weird things happen though. Like, I had a sure winner in the fourth race at Rio Doso. I was betting on the one, five, and six horses for an exacta, and I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be between three horses, right? So I parlay them three ways. I bet them all, and then this horse from France, uh, Le Monde de Real, unknown. Never even run the part-time for that distance, takes second. Bummer. Yeah, should've never bet big. You know, I knew better. You never bet big with an unknown horse in the field. Yeah, shit happens. Yeah, if I would've just controlled myself, you know, like. You put 30% into the system like you're supposed to, and I, I would have been fine. Hmm. How much did you lose? Uh, 1400 Wow. Yeah. Wow. There's nothing wrong with helping out people. And you could get your moped. It's a Vespa. Whatever. No, there's a big difference between a moped and a Vespa, Ren. It's not the point. Vespas are cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool, Mark. The point is we'd be doing it for the money. And helping people. It's possible to do both. They were looking at me and snickering and taking little bites of squash and leering over at me and laughing like this. Well, they could have been laughing at a joke or something. I know when someone's laughing at me. I'm 
kind of stuck. We're kind of stuck. It all comes down to choices. I don't see where I have a good choice here, Mark. There's always a choice, Ren. I let you father a child with my professor, I get my PhD. I don't, I get nada. Well, don't forget the Vespa. That's not funny. They've become little racquetball buddies. Who are racquetball buddies? Leland Hutchins, Ren's father, and Carl, my ex-husband. Got it? Got it. You know, men, they like to have sports buddies. I like peas in a pod. Two little peas. Nobody would know. I would know. And me. And your professor. And Billy, Billy, the ice cream guy, that's it. Sarah. Sarah, honey. I just mean that nobody's really that good except Martin Luther King or Jesus, and they killed them. Okay, the rest of us, the best we can hope for is perceived integrity and hope that nobody really sees the skeletons in our closet. But what if somebody sees the skeletons in our closet? Well, that could be really bad. It could ruin you. Or set you free. Nobody's free. Martin Luther King Jr., Jesus? They're dead. Mm. Just uh, grab a beer. Oh, that's cool. Where's Sarah? Oh. Out there. We should go join her. No, no, no. Um, just let her be for a little bit. What's she doing? Just stare now. You know how you do that. Yeah. Yeah, we all do that. Is she all right? No, not really. She had a, well, little nervous breakdown couple of weeks ago and uh, I had to call the ambulance. She had to go into the mental hospital for a few days. Oh. They told us she was visiting the University of Nebraska. She'll be okay. You know, when I went there, there was one lady that stared at me the whole time. <laughs> stared right at me. Two hours. I can't imagine. Well, you know, Orion. Yes, I like the three stars of his belt. Well, okay, well, if you were to travel through his belt between the, the second and third star on the right, but closer to the third star, you keep going, and you come to this purplish planet with four rings and three reddish stars, and basically you take a left. Oh, no, not that one, no. Ew. Uh. Uh. Yes! <sighs> that one, yes. It goes nicely next to the yellow. It's the energy. It will really help you. Thanks. Anywho, um, so the galaxy behind the next galaxy after that one is mine. And the 113th largest star we call Gla'ata Keanu Ryu, its seventh planet, Ramatoviactican, is my planet. It is so beautiful. Yeah, I'd love to see it. You can. I know. Well, it's in another dimension. Oh, how about this one? Oh, pretty. So you just came here from Brahmacato? Brahmatoviactican, no. I didn't just randomly come here. I was sent here. Who sent you? Higher dimensional beings. I entered this body when someone died and was finished with it. 
Who? Her name was Rhonda. She's from Ohio. How did she die? Oh, she overdosed on LSD. Oh. No, it made her more receptive. Certainly. The doctor, he calls me Rhonda. It's really annoying. He's a fucker. I am Helius. Of course you are. I'm sorry. I'm joining you until they catch me. Oh, I just can't sit there anymore with Thorazine Sally. She's on Thorazine? Yeah. Why do you think she's drooling like that? Uh, they're controlling her. I don't know why I have to sit with her. I mean, I didn't throw my potatoes. They put her on Thorazine because she threw her potatoes? Don't throw your potatoes. Don't throw your potatoes. Don't sling your tomatoes. Refrain, refrain, you drama queen, or you'll end up on Thorazine. The nurse at the station has lost all her patience, and now there's nowhere to run. You act like a baby, so silly, so crazy, in the middle of her mash rerun. They come in to see you and give you the needle and pour the sauce in your arm. Don't throw your potatoes. Don't sling your tomatoes. Refrain, refrain, you drama queen, or you'll end up on Thorazine. The doctors, he's witnessed the screams and the fits. Yes, it's time to turn off your sun. You've started a melee so silly, so crazy. Strip naked and go for a run. They come in to see you and give you the needle and pour the sauce in your arm. And don't throw your potatoes. Don't sling your tomatoes. Refrain, refrain, you drama queen, or you'll end up on You okay? Yeah. Okay. Just staring at Orion. I think it was 1977, and your father had befriended this assistant art professor. God, what was his name? Something Larry or Scott. He was an Aries, self-centered, childlike. Anyway. Your father had gotten into the 70s out of nowhere, and I mean into the 70s. He had this handlebar mustache, and he tried to grow his hair out like a hippie, but, you know, he had that kind of hair that just ended up looking like an old mop, all the strands going every which way. And those thick, horrible plastic glasses that we all had to wear back then. Your mother followed suit. She had hot spandex pants, mini skirts, and feather earrings. Well, not in American history. The French and the Spanish were something else, and the, the English were the white men. I wonder why that is. I think it's a Catholic versus Protestant thing. Ah, uh, religion. Everybody wants their group to be the group. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think the Catholics seem to like to fuck the Indians more than the Protestants. <laughs> probably made him jealous. You're not Catholic, are you? Recovering. That assistant art professor, he lived in some warehouse down by the waterfront, and they would throw these crazy parties, and they were crazy to us. We usually went to other parties with other faculty, drank wine, ate cheese, boring. You ever go to any crazy parties? Not really. Can you remember that time when you were a little girl and your parents were hippies? I remember my dad 
would always make things up and it would make my mom so angry. It would? Like, I would say, Daddy, where did the stars come from? And he would tell me that there were fairies. And sometimes one of the fairies would streak across the sky, leaving fairy dust trailing behind. And my mom said, Leland, don't tell her that. Tell her the truth. She would get so angry. What is it that you want, Mark? A Vespa. What's a Vespa? <laughs> oh, one of those cool European scooters. Like the nuns use? Well, yeah, I guess some nuns use them. Um, I always think of an uh, Italian guy. The jet black hair, Ray Bans using one. Motoring over to the cafe for cafe au lait and then whisking off to the, uh, the ocean. Some hot chick riding behind him. And she said, honey, in space there are these rocks called meteors that get stuck in the gravitational pull of the Earth. And the Earth pulls them into the atmosphere at a very, very high speed. And I remember I asked if they were faster than a cheetah. And she said that yes, they were much faster. And when they entered the atmosphere, they burned up and left a streak in the sky. And some people called them shooting stars, but they were really rocks called meteors. And she asked if I understood, and I said yes. And then my dad said they wore funny hats, the meteors. You ever think about a Harley? Yeah, I don't really think that fits my image. Probably not. One of those baskets? That'd be cool. Put stuff in. I remember that night, I was going to bed and I heard them fighting. And a Harley for six years. Mm, that's cool. Yeah, some asshole pulled out in front of me. I skidded into some sand and hit a tree and broke my tibia. And I came running outside, crying, squeezing my teddy bear. And I said, Daddy, I'd be happy if you stayed. My leg tingles when it rains, but it don't rain here too much. Anyway, wear a helmet. Yeah, I like those. Those helmets that are like the, the German stormtroopers. Yeah. I know it really doesn't fit with the Vespa, but in a way it kind of does. Did you send her out there to say that? And she said, what? And he said, you know what? And she said, I didn't send her out there. I wouldn't do that to my child. And he said she did it on purpose to get him to stay. They were just hollering. DeSoto, he like found these man-made hills that were left from the Paleo Indians and a few of their uh, descendants. And they were like 400 feet tall and the size of a football field. Did anybody excavate them? In the early part of the century. Hmm. What did they find? A few pottery shards. <laughs> you would have thought they would have found a pyramid with a Altar, uh, sacrifice the virgins. <laughs> <laughs> I could have cheated on him too, but I was a fool. I mean, when it was all said and done, I should have taken a couple of those shots. I could have had sex with that one plumber from Spain who came over to fix the shower and worked without his shirt. To the corn god. Salute. Salute. Corn god virgins. <laughs> or the visiting Finnish grad student pair. Is that their main god? I think so. You know, not too many people agree with me. But, like, their whole society was based on corn. And I guess others think, you know, the sun god had to be their main god. But I think it's just bullshit. Like, all the indigenous people had the sun god as their main god. I'll buy it to the great... Corn God, corny. <laughs> corny. <laughs> corny. He was like the God Thor. One night, he trapped me in a corner of the lab and just pulled me into him and kissed me hard. I could feel his lightning bolt. 
Can you imagine just watching, like, you know, fly on the wall, the summer solstice ceremony of the corn god? Oh, I can imagine some corn god virgins. <laughs> <laughs> he was grabbing my ass and grabbing my breasts, and finally I came to my senses and I pushed him away. And why? For what? Sounds hot. Oh, it was. I went there once to the Alabama mountains right around the summer solstice. And it's like hard to find the place. You know, there's no signs pointing the way. I tell you, Ren, if you feel some love or lust or whatever for someone, go ahead and do it. Once. So you don't end up like me. Or if you do, you can say, well, at least I fucked the plumber. Every summer solstice, these like hippie people come to the mounds. You know, some are druids or, or people who practice these ancient religions or cults. And then some who believe that these mounds were left by aliens that like visit our planet long ago and they built these mounds and the pyramids and, and they perform these ancient religious ceremonies and rituals and dancing and chanting. <laughs> And all these different groups, they really seem to benefit from smoking marijuana and doing hallucinogens. Mark was out of town doing research, and I went to this blues bar to hear this band from out of town play. And the whole time, the bass player was just staring at me. So when they go on break, he comes up to me, buys me a drink, tells me I'm pretty, and I ended up taking him home to my apartment. And we made love. Love? <laughs> we banged. We ended up trying some punch, and I don't know what was in there, some drug? <laughs> this is a really strong drug. We were at one of those crazy parties at the warehouse, and there were all these California hippie-type people, and a DJ spinning records, and people on pillows smoking pot out of hookahs and using phrases like far out and groovy. And somehow, I'm in this circle dancing in my underwear, and there's like two guys, almost five totally naked women, and I swear to you, one of the women, she's like, you know, she's like rubbing her butt up against my, you know, my Johnson. I pull her back into me and she seizes my hand. She takes me back to her tent and she like dominated me. She was like a big girl. <laughs> and your mom and dad arrived and he was wearing flared blue jeans and one of those African babuka shirts and sandals and beads and those damn plastic glasses. You know, in the morning she makes oatmeal and she says, you know, she tells me she she worked at Target and she just got promoted to assistant manager of the junior department and and she says <laughs> she says, see, dreams really do come true. She ran up to me and said, Oh my god, it's Casey and the Sunshine Band, and she dragged me onto the dance floor and everyone watched us. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh. Come on, Corny. Join me. <laughs> Corny? Okay, Mazola, the corn god. <laughs> hey, I need an instrument. Oh, well, go to the barbecue and grab something. And we were all dancing crazy, grinding against each other. Come on, you're dancing.
cap, sir! And move your fucking ice cream truck from in front of my house! Hey! hey, 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 hey. what they want? My sperm. Yes, your sperm and something else, something more. What else? I don't know. Revenge? Torture? Torture. Yeah, keeping me cooped up in that lab all day. What did you do to her? Nothing. So why do you think that she wants revenge? It's my father. What did he do to her? He still hangs out with her ex-husband. Okay, so they're friends. I mean, from before the divorce. You know, the guy's friends are supposed to stay with the guy and the girl's with the girl, right? Yeah. But that doesn't stop the girl from hating the guy's friends. And I think he might have actually slept with her. With your dad? Yeah, with my dad. Maybe it was a long time ago, maybe it was only once, but she was really pretty, so it was probably at least three times. Let's try that. Can you stop with the gambling terms? Sorry, it's just part of my nomenclature. I know, but you said you would quit it with the gambling terms. I'm sorry. Sort of like you said you would quit gambling. I know. And then we had to ask Daddy? Yeah. Who told you that they had an affair? Sarah almost did tonight. Almost? Yeah. She was telling some story about this crazy party that she and Carl went to with Mom and Dad in the 70s, and it was Oddly sexual. Like the fishing story? Yeah. And then she just suddenly stopped and ran outside to join in on the dancing. You think they're swingers? No. Okay. She's my professor. I know. She wouldn't swing with her students. All right, I'm just saying, when she told that fishing story, it felt like there was this secret sexual message being hurled at me. She wants your sperm. 
Well, yeah. Do you think she really had a mental breakdown? I don't know. She doesn't seem that nutty to me. But then my Uncle Scotty had one. You never would have thought anything was wrong with the guy, and then, poof. She does seem a little different lately, but I don't know. And then part of me thinks it could have been triggered by the miscarriage. What miscarriage? The Pollock. The Pollock miscarried? Yeah. When? Last week. Why didn't you tell me? I thought you knew. How would I know? Sarah. How would she know? I just thought she would know. It's not like men go around talking to their ex-wives. Oh. Unless they have to, young children or something. I guess you're right. How did it happen? I don't know. I wonder if she was taking a bath. Greg didn't say anything about a bath. Sometimes the warm water starts. Okay, Greg didn't say. You know, when the topic changes to like miscarriages or menstruation, guys don't really talk specifics. Yeah. I think he changed his topic to soccer. Anyway, I just think maybe that's what sent her over the edge. That news would make her happy. Yeah, happy. Yeah. Ecstatic, maybe even manic. And then later, depressive. Manic depressive. Bipolar. That news about the miscarriage, we should tell her tonight. Okay. She'll be so excited about the possibility of having a baby before Carl. Manic. Yeah. And then later when we tell her she can't have your sperm, that'll be a big bummer. Depressive. Manic depressive. Was your Uncle Scotty manic or depressive when he snapped? Depressive. Before that, he was fun. We should spring it on her tonight. She might snap. Why do we want her to snap? Because if she snaps, we'll know if Billy was telling the truth. Okay. And if she snaps, they'll take her away. <laughs> uh huh. And if they take her away, they'll assign me a new professor, one who isn't obsessed with punishing my father and vis-a-vis -vis me. <laughs> snap, snap. Okay. It's a win-win situation. No, it's not really win-win. Of course it is. No, Tommy Mervins defines win-win to be a situation of synergy in business where both people profit win-win. Fuck Tommy Mervins. Do you know that his seminars have helped thousands of people? No, they haven't. Well, he's very positive. The only thing Tommy Mervyn cares about is winning for himself. That's it. He wins because you blow $900 on his seminar, and he makes you think you win because now you have 14 cassettes to play in your car. 17. And a bunch of stupid phrases to say in the mirror. Affirmations. Well, I affirm his shit doesn't work. Okay, okay, you win. Tommy Mervyn's is a fucking butt wipe. So what about the other people in the lab? They gonna get a new professor? The Chinese? <laughs> well, they're not all Chinese. Yeah, they are. I thought Fan was Malaysian. Chinese Malaysian? Well? Why are you so concerned with the other people in my lab? I don't know. Porpoise. Two children playing in a pool. The god of all invisible things. Hmm. A baby stroller. Sunflowers. Island of discontent. I don't know if I want to have Ren come to Iowa or not. Whew. Have you talked about that? No. I was waiting for her to bring it up. When do you think that one's gonna be? 
middle of the night after I've peed. Uh-huh. <laughs> be like four in the morning and I'm barely able to stay awake and she'll talk about that one day. She'll be old and fat and she's afraid I wouldn't want her then. They need reassurance. I guess. Again and again. Yeah. It's best to keep them in the present. Yeah, I guess I'm just not always sure. I mean, I could bring it up, but I'm kind of afraid of telling her the truth. What's the truth? Just I'm waffling. Hmm. What do you think? Son, I'm 47 years old. I drive an ice cream truck, and I've never been married. <laughs> I can't imagine why in the world you'd want my advice. I just feel like you're the first person I've been around in quite some time that I feel like is actually telling the truth. Oh, everybody's telling the truth, just not usually with their words. And you're, you're still with Sarah, even though she's crazy and you're good. Oh, everybody's good, everybody's bad. Everybody's a little batshit crazy. Yeah, but most people, they're just good with their words. You think I'm good because I'm hanging around with a crazy woman? Well, yeah. Who else would do that? Everybody. You think... You think they're all crazy? I think they all have some kind of neuroses. And what's Sarah's neuroses? You know, I think she might have slipped on into psychoses. You're still around. Crazy likes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Salute. Salute. And you know, if somebody's sticking around, they're getting something out of the deal. What are you getting out of it? Pretty darn good sex. <laughs> That's what we get out of it, if we're lucky. I guess so. And I'm getting an ice cream truck. Yeah? Yeah, they're making it for me right now. <laughs> That's cool. Mm -hmm. It's got a big old captain's chair. Nice. And instead of that ding, 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 bullshit, I got him to play Santana's I Got a Black Magic Woman. I think that's copyrighted. You know, I think it is. But you know, sometimes you just gotta go for it. You know, you gotta do what's right for Big Daddy O, because they're doing what's right for Big Mama. I can tell you that. I had a miscarriage when I was younger. Oh, I'm sorry. At the time, it was something of a relief. It was sad, also. Really sad. Yeah, of course. See, I wasn't sure who the father was at the time. My husband or another man. I mean, a big part of me wanted it to be my husband. The sensible, clean side of me. But the messy side? The primal side wanted it to be the other. You loved him? Both. I love them both, just differently. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I couldn't tell either one of them. This is better than a soap opera. <laughs> I know, I know, and I'm embarrassed. Ugh. I don't want you to think I'm that way, sleeping around with a bunch of men. No. It's okay. I did it too.
In fact, I don't think you can say you've really lived a full life until you've had an affair. Yeah? I guess so. But still. If you've had, like... more than four... then I think you have some severe psychological issues. <laughs> that is an excellent hypothesis. I had one with my cousin. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Second cousin, twice removed. That's legal. <laughs> I fell into a blackness. Mm. Oh, yeah. I know blackness. It lasted several days. I couldn't stop crying. Luckily, my husband went to work every day, so I was able to hide most of the crying. But one day, I just could not. I burst. And he didn't know what to do. You know, men. And I couldn't tell him. So, instead, I told him that my mother had said something particularly mean to me, and I just couldn't stop the record from spinning. Mm -hmm. And he brought me flowers. And he told me about how in football there could be a quick change, like a fumble that the other team, you know, recovers and takes for a touchdown. And how if you're not careful, if you don't bounce back, the game can unravel. But that champions bounce back. And that he knew I was a champion. And I said, thank you, honey. And he told me I was so pretty. It's just, it's really important to me to have a fulfilled life. I can totally understand. I used to think it doesn't matter, but it does. Those women who claim they don't want children, most of them, liars. But you said you didn't want children before. Liar. Do you know what Mark told me? What? The Polak. She miscarried. What? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh my god. I know. Wow. Finally, some good news. I thought you'd be happy. I could have a baby first before Carl. Yeah. It happened twice before. You lost money. Gambling. Yeah. And Ren had to go to her dad and ask for money. Wow. That's tough. To have her father have that over you. He sighs like this. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh, Hope this won't happen again. <laughs> I, I say, of course not, sir. Well, you know, sometimes we just have to do stuff for money. Well, so then later, he takes me out in the yard and get this, he forgives me. <laughs> well, I forgive you too. <laughs> You are two and oh. <laughs> mm. Maybe she has a problem. Like, 
the lining of her uterus is bad or something fantastic like that. Yeah. This calls for a margarita. I think it does. So I lost. How much? 2,000. Wow. See, it would have come in nine to one, but. Could have had a Vespa. <laughs> yeah, or paid the lights bill. The lights? Well, we've got candles at the house right now, and I told Rand I forgot to mail the bill and I'd take care of it Monday. Ah, oh, Monday. Where are the boys? Oh, boys! Boys! Come in here, there's wonderful news. Grab margarita. Okay. Okay. Salute. No, wait, wait. I have a toast. To the Pollock's miscarriage. To the Pollock's miscarriage, yay. Salute. Okay. <laughs> Mark, how did this happen? Oh, uh, I think she was taking a bath. And it just came out in the water? Poop. <laughs> <laughs> Poopy poop. day and he went out and started the car in the garage to warm it up and the carbon monoxide got him I went out and found him I turned off the car I opened the garage door Try to revive him. But he was gone. And later, my husband found the note under his pillow. <laughs> Got over it. <sighs> Empty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horses. And all the king's men. And all the doctors. And the pills. And the pills that don't like the pills. Oh. I like musicals. 
Me too. I like musicals. I'm with you. Because I know that you're not overly optimistic about Mark. No, I'm good now. Listen, I'll admit, I wanted our son to be a linebacker. I did, but I've readjusted. He can be Tommy Pettacott. Who is that? He was an age back at my college. I don't understand. He was a possession wide receiver, one of the best. He ran precise routes, he had sticky little hands. Lee, I need you. Look, to I'm readjusting for us. Men want their sons to play sports. It's natural. I was bummed, but he can be a possession wide receiver or a jockey. A jockey? Don't say that to a woman who wants to be a mother, Billy. A jockey? No woman wants her son to be that. I can't believe you would say that. I'm sorry. I was adjusting. The probability of our son being a professional sports player is really low. I know. Like the fifth standard deviation of a normal bell curve. I don't know what that means. It means that Mark has a PhD and I have a PhD. And so probably our son will be very smart and could be a scientist or a doctor. I don't really like doctors. I need you to focus. I have a milk phobia from my childhood. I know, but I thought you were over that. Well, I know. I thought you were over it because you drive around all day selling milk to children. I don't sell milk to children. I sell ice cream. What do you think ice cream is, Billy? It's frozen milk. It's frozen milk. Yeah, but with corn syrup and xanthan gum and artificial flavors. Do you know what artificial flavors are, Billy? It's stuff they put in the food to make it taste artificial. It's perfume and it's poison. There's cyanide in it, although not very much. The immune system keeps with it. <sighs> Billy, what are we doing here tonight? What is our objective? To get the sperm. Yes, that's right. To get the sperm. I am on the verge of a panic attack here. I'm going to have to take another Xanax. Okay. I want to wrap this up tonight. You're almost 50. And how good a football player do you think our son is going to be if you're not capable of, of throwing him a football when he's seven? Okay. I'm going to make one last ditch effort to sway Ren. You keep Mark outside. I don't think we need Ren. Are you kidding? Of course we need her. She's the woman. Mark's desperate. He's really desperate. What? He's a gambler. He bets on horses and he's a really bad gambler. Really? Yeah, he's lost all their money and it's not the first time. Oh, this is good. They had to borrow money from Ren's dad. And the lights are out at their house because he didn't pay the bill. And he promised to pay it on Monday. Really good. I think if I show him that $3,000, he's going to go for it. I think you're right. And if he takes the money, he'll follow through because he has a doctorate and people with a PhD, they have integrity. You keep Ren in the house and I'm gonna work on Mark in the yard. Just keep her there, okay? Just wait until we come back inside. And I'm going to work on her inside. Let's do this. A dog? A corpse. Dead mice. Children running in a wheat field. My mother. My mother. My father. You gotta be sneaky. I always get caught. Not in Alabama. <laughs> Not true that. But with the gambling. Yeah. Women like money. Yeah. Don't much like it when it's gone. Yeah, tend to get a little bitchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you gotta deceive them. Oh, I know. I've done it before. I lost $1,200 and I told Ren I went to a Tommy Mervin seminar. <laughs> I hate that fucker. He's such a pussy. Uh, yeah, I told her I paid $1,400 for one of his seminars and that it'd make me a brand new man. That's sneaky. He's like a cross between a televangelist and a used car salesman. 
He's never done anything in his whole life. Well, except convince several million people to give him a shitload of money for a bunch of bullshit tapes. Well, besides that. Stand and look at themselves in the mirror and say, I am somebody. I am the greatest. I am somebody. I am the greatest. He has a cheesy fucking smile. You know, I bought his tapes at a garage sale for $50. <laughs> they devalue quickly. I used to get up every morning and listen to the damn things. I am somebody. I'm gonna put that horse shit on my ice cream bars. I am omnipotent. Say yes, say yes, say yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You know, the other thing you can do is you can replace the money. Women like that, okay. Here, check this out. Uh, Say yes. Yes. Look at that bush. It's huge. Seventies. Women used to let them grow like that. It's nice, ain't it? Women trim them now. It's old school. She's got a nice ass. Yeah. Look, she's from Alabama. Don't hold it like oh. that. The girls might see. Here you go. Hold on to that. And then here, my friend is $3,000. Shit. Dude. And this... Freeze up your hands, unless you want me to hold it. No. Listen, if you slide along the side of the house, back towards the back wall is a good spot. Don't worry. She'll never know. You just tell her that you uh, hit a racehorse in a few days. Tell her I was gambling? Yeah. Believe you, man. Women don't mind men who win at gambling. What they don't like is losers, even if they're trying not to lose. Where do I, where do I put it? Ah. Voila. It's an ice cube tray. I had to improvise. Look, we'll put it in the, in the truck freezer when you're done, no worries. All right, give me the money. After. All right, cover me. Yep. Why Mark's sperm? Well, he, he's great. He's intelligent, hardworking, good genes. It has nothing to do with me. Of course it does. You're great. And my father? He's great too. He has intelligence and that Y factor. The chromosome? No, they all have the Y chromosome. They don't all have the Y factor. It connects to some primordial gene in us double X's and makes us scream yes, yes. That story from the hippie party about my dad? That was long ago. Did you sleep with my father? Wow. Is that what this is all about? No, this is about me and Billy and having a baby and mortality about having someone, child that lives on. Mark's first baby would be your baby just afraid it would be like a poison to me, to us. It's just friends helping friends. I think we should go. I, I, um, I, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. What? I, I've just had an epiphany, an epiphany. Um, the pH, that's what's off in your Proteus experiment. I need a pen and some paper. Uh, in that drawer, the one, the, the second one right there. This is huge. I, I mean, this could win the, the Dira Bagui Castro Prize in biochemistry. Really? Yes, really. And get us published in Science Magazine. Science Magazine? Stop masturbating on my fence! Shh. Did you finish? Yeah, here, give me the money. Mark? Yeah? 
Did you just jack off our sperm into an ice cube tray? It's a win-win situation. There are no win-win situations. I've lost more money at the track. So and... what? So what, Mark? G give them back their money. Give it back. No, no. <laughs> we have a deal. No. <laughs> that is my sperm. Mine. Here. No. Take it. No! You stabbed me. I'm sorry. You fucking stabbed me. Mark. Call an ambulance. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. That was a mistake. A mistake. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Baby. There's a first aid kit. I need to go to a hospital. You need to go to a hospital. I'm so sorry. I don't want to go. You know, I don't want you to go either. You'll visit me. I will. Tell me you'll visit me. Well, I'll come. When you get out, we'll rent a boat. <laughs> And we'll go fishing again. In a sea of love. <laughs> I'm your pescador. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>